This will be lesson number two on the goodness of God, our worship service. I thought I was done with this lesson, but God said revisit, so I won't be long. So I want to reiterate some things that I said on last week. The goodness of God is my title. I want to say good morning to all of you that are watching. Again, by YouTube, for those of you that are here at the service, may God be with you. The goodness of God, that's what I want to talk about. This will be lesson number two. You hear that phrase often, God is good, and he is. Amen. He is good. I can tell you that from experience. And the Bible says that he is. The rich young ruler walked up to Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus stopped him. He said, first of all, there's none good save God alone. God is the only one that's good. Amen. And so he desired to be saved, but he wasn't willing to do what God required of him to be saved. So in his eyesight, God was only good because he gave me a lot of stuff. And so Jesus told him to go sell everything that he had and give it to the poor. But thou come now and follow me and be one of my preachers. And he don't want to do that. Now, I didn't, now you taking it a little too far, Jesus, because the Bible said the boy had many riches. And so God was only good because he was getting from God what he thought he should have. But when Jesus told him, go sell everything you have because that's going to be a hindrance to the ministry that I have for you. And give it to the poor and then come follow me and you have riches in heaven. He didn't want no riches in heaven. He wanted his riches now. Amen, man. And so we're talking about the goodness of God, and God is good. He's good to all of us. Amen. But you, out of gratitude, ought to be grateful to give back to God what he deserves, and that's the praise and honor that he deserves. Amen. And a lot of times, we don't want to give back to God what he allowed us to receive. You do know when you came into this world, you brought nothing. Amen. Now, that's what Apostle Paul said. He said, when you came into this world, you brought nothing. And he said, when you leave here, you ain't carrying nothing with you. Amen. So somebody, if you want to give God the credit, somebody been good to you, because when you got here, you ain't have nothing. Amen. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, but look at all the stuff you got now. Look, look at all, all the stuff, stuff you got, got now. Somebody been good to you. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, you can look at it for homework. Just write the scripture down. Don't turn to it. Luke 18, 19. He said, but one good save God alone. We know God is good. I'm going over some things I said on lesson number one. We know God is good. We live in the second wealthiest nation in the world. Amen. Amen. The United States is the second wealthiest nation in the world. <laughs> Out of all the top ten nations, the United States fall in rank number two when it comes to wealth. Japan or China is number one. Amen. Amen. And so the United States, they have $150 trillion. We have $50 trillion. Ooh. But when it comes to the Christian nation, the United States of America is the number one Christian nation in the world made up of Catholics and Protestants. Catholics were the first church in the world, universal church. But when Martin Luther came along, they were claiming a split from the Roman Catholic Church. And it was just a mere split. Because they believe mostly the same thing. They believe in the Trinity. They believe in Jesus. They believe in the Virgin Mary. They believe that a person must be saved and baptized and all that. They believe that you must confess your sins to God and all that. But there was a slight difference in the belief of a Protestant is a person that believes the same thing a Catholic believes. But they just believe a little differently. Like Protestants believe that people, only people that believe in God or that are saved should be baptized. And they believe that people be submerged in water. But the Catholics and the Protestants believe in the same and worship the same God. They both believe that you can't get to heaven unless you go by Jesus. That's Amen. the good part. Amen. Amen. But you know, when you got humans in the mix, there's going to always be some Amen. splits. But anyway... They, well, we can't agree on that goodness of God. We need to give God the glory and the honor. Amen. Amen. And so we're the second, we the second nation when it comes to wealth. We the second richest nation in the world, Amen. which is not bad, according to the whole world. Amen. 
but we're the number one Christian nation in the world. Amen. Amen. Yet many of us don't show gratitude to God for the good he is doing and has done in our life. The churches all over the world should be packed. Not because the pastor wants you there. A lot of people think it's the pastor wants people to come to. No, there's a scripture that says, forsake not yourself from the assembly. That's in Amen. Hebrews chapter 10. God wants you to go to church. Amen. Amen. We Amen. go everywhere else, we don't have a problem. Amen. You know you can watch the football game on TV if you got a big screen, huh? but some of us just got to go to the stadium. Amen. Look to next day. You can't smell the popcorn on TV though. <laughs> you can't smell the chili dog with the cheese on TV. Amen. 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 Some people just want to go in person to get the live effect. You don't want to get the live effect from church. Amen. I just watch it online. It ain't the same. Amen. And we don't do that. We don't do that with the company. You could do. My wife used to do it. You could do in house aerobics, put it on YouTube, and then, but Amen. you don't smell the sweat of other people yeah. at the gym. Amen. There's something about when you go to the gym and get on the machine, it motivates you. Amen. But we talk about the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Yet many of us don't show gratitude to God for the good He is doing and has done in our life. Amen. We were taught when we was young when somebody do something good for you to say thank you. Amen. And you can't just tell God thank you and don't come see Him sometime. Amen. Out of gratitude, you ought to worship God. Amen. The Bible says, give honor to him on his due. Amen. Amen. We honor everything but God. We got a day for everything. Amen. Mother's Day, Father's Amen. Day, National Donut Amen. Day, Amen. National Amen. Fried Chicken. I love National Fried Chicken Day. National <laughs> Fried Chicken. Amen. But when do we honor God? Besides Easter. Amen. Besides Easter. I mean, what if God said, I'm going to just bless you once a year? You get one blessing a year, whether it's for your finances, your healing, for whatever you need, I'm going to only do it once and you say, well, that ain't fair. Amen. Amen. But you see how God feels now. Amen. You can only get one blessing a year, but we want God to just protect us, bless us, take care of us, and just do all these one things, but we want to show no kind of gratitude Amen. for God. Amen. My message today is for those who seem to get caught up in the pleasures and the enjoyment of life. Don't forget about the goodness of God. Amen. God said he's not talking to sinners today. He want to talk to his children that he being good to that don't want to show him no kind of glory. Amen. Talking to you. Amen. We discuss how great, how great a nation we live in. In 2020, they did a survey on how many restaurants in the, was in America that were registered, that they could count that, you know, were paying taxes, that had a DBA, they had their name, copyright, you know what I'm saying, all that good legal stuff. It was a million restaurants two years ago. It's probably more now. We're not talking about the mom and pops, the hamburger stands, you know, people sending hamburgers out their back one of their house, cool cups and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> we just blessed. Amen. We blessed. Amen. A million restaurants. You can eat out and drink bottled water. Most people don't drink tap water. You guys can drink tap water, that's like cursing them out. I don't drink no tap water. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with it. I, 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 I drink when I go to your house. Whatever you have, I eat and drink what's prepared before. I ain't gonna ask you was the Kool Aid made with tap water, <laughs> but some of us so blessed we gonna ask. Amen. Is this tap water Kool Aid or you know Ozark? Amen. Look how ble look how far we come. Amen. <laughs> there are about two hundred thirty million people. These are things I said online. Shop online. And get name brand stuff. Yes. Shop online. Don't yes. go to the mall. You ain't gonna get my Cadillac converter. Amen. Shop online and get it delivered. UPS. Amen. Amen. 7.936 million people. 79.36 million people own a home. Live in a nice neighborhood or suburb. Mm. Or just owning your home is a blessing. Amen. Sit down on your porch. All night, let the mosquito eat your leg if you want to. Amen. Can't nobody tell you go home, go in the house. Amen. No curfew. Amen. 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 We blessed. Amen. 43.6 million people rent. Live in a fancy apartment or a high rise Amen. with elevators. I ain't got to catch the stairs. Amen. Covered parking. Out of all those people, only 553,742 people. 742 people are homeless and need a place to stay. 
have a checking account. Amen, amen. Means we got some money coming in or money saved. Amen. 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 276 million registered vehicles on a, on a car. 276 people. 276 million people have an automobile. 91% of households have access to a vehicle. Amen. amen. We ain't on Metro. We told Metro, bye bye. Amen. <laughs> 130,930 public and private schools. Our children have the finest education. 5,300 colleges and universities. Most of us, some of them are going online. Amen. Amen. Don't have to worry about paying for a dorm. We go online. 40,000 grocery stores. When mama and them grew up in the age of farming, most people were tractor would kill them today. They don't cut their own yard. Let alone walk behind a tractor. Amen. 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 Forty thousand grocery stores. They did a recent poll of two thousand Americans. Show most Americans eat at least two meals a day and three snacks. Amen. Amen. Overseas in Afghanistan, I heard they eat just one meal a day. They say we are gluttony. We eat too much food in America. Two meals a day and three snacks. You talking Amen. about me right there. Amen. I know I'm going to get two meals and at least two snacks Amen. a day. Amen. If you multiply that times seven, that's 28 <laughs> meals in a week. Amen. Amen. We include the juice and soda pop we drink. Amen. 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 380,000 churches in the United States in 2020. And of those 380,000, only 30,000 shut down. That ain't bad. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee the power to get the wealth. God is responsible for you being wealthy today. Amen. Because Amen. when you came into this world, you brought nothing. Amen. And when you leave here, you should carry nothing. Amen. And if you got the will, somebody either gave it to you or you worked for it. Amen. And so he gave you the help to get the will. That's right. I say he gave you the help to get the will. A sick man can't Amen. make no money. Amen. Some of us have forgotten how we used to live before God blessed us. Amen. And showed us favor and kindness. Some of us forgot how we used to live. Some of y'all was so poor you used to eat mayonnaise sandwich with Amen. sugar on it. Don't look, don't look at your neighbor. Don't you dare Amen. do that. Amen. And if you was real broke, you ate a mustard sandwich with hot sauce. Amen. A potato salad sandwich with bread. And when the spaghetti got low, you put the rest of those spaghetti and made a spaghetti sandwich. Amen. Don't tell your friends you eat spaghetti sandwich. Because you wanted that starch. Amen. And now you don't even eat spaghetti. You eat lasagna. Amen. And what's them fancy bro? Them raviolis with meat in them. Amen. From Olive Garden. They buy seven dollars for four liters. I went a long time ago. I said, give me some raviolis. And the lady brought me four raviolis and a bottle of water. I said, ma'am, is this all will come in a ravioli? She said, yeah, that's all will come in a ravioli with four big ones. I said, what is this? I was still hungry. <laughs> Somebody had meatball and spaghetti. I should have did like them. Amen. We don't eat spaghetti sandwich no more. Amen. Amen. And we was happy. Amen. Now we, we too good. We Amen. mac and cheese with the fake cheese in it. Now we get Vel we only eat Velveeta now. You talking about me? If it ain't Velveeta, don't put that on the hamburger. They ain't gonna eat it. Or jalapeno jack. Amen. I didn't know what a jalapeno jack was growing up. Amen. You want some pepper on your cheese, you put pepper on your cheese. Cut it and put it on there. Amen. Amen. Put pepper coming in your cheese. I just want you to mind you, some of us have forgotten how we used to live before Amen. God blessed us and showed us favor and kindness. I want Amen. to remind you today to show some gratitude to our God and don't Amen. forget where you come from. Amen. Don't let your accomplishments stand in the way of your God. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Don't let your accomplishments stand in the way of God. Amen. Look to the next day on lesson number two now. Lesson number two now.
Listen, don't get caught up in this what people are saying in the day. Amen. Your life should never be measured by your possession. Amen. Your life should never be measured by your possession. Amen. Your life should not consist of the thing that you possess, but your life should be measured by the relationship you have with God. Amen. Quickly, let's go to Luke 12, 15. I want to show you that scripture. Luke 12, 15. Don't let people Amen. convince you that your life should be measured on your possessions. That ain't how God look at you. Amen. Luke 12, 15. Your life does not consist in the bonds of things you possess. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people have a lot of possessions that don't have time for God. Amen. Amen. Luke 12, 15, when you find it, say, bless his name. Bless his Look what it says. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covenants, for as man life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. That's what Jesus Amen. said. Your life is not based on how much stuff you got. But you listen to some of these churches, that's all they're basing on. Amen. Amen. God wants you to have this and God wants you to have that. Well, help me get them, Reverend. Amen. Or we're going to get quiet when you, when you ask him that. Amen. Now you got to figure out a way to get it. And he telling you, God wants you to get it, but how am I supposed to get it? Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. That's Amen. in Isaiah chapter 1. So if you be willing and obedient, what good parent won't take care of their kids? Amen. God going to bless you because you're obedient. Amen. For every good and perfect gift come from God alone. If you got something and you having something and you blessed, it's because God been good to you. Yeah. Amen. That's why it's called the goodness of God. Let's look at James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Or you can just write the script down and look at it when you get home. Look to your name, neighbor and say, he ain't going to tell you if it ain't there. He ain't going to tell you if it ain't there. I speak for God. I want you to know this. Knowledge is power. Don't you ever forget that. Amen. Knowledge is power. Jesus said, you shall know the Amen. truth, and the truth going to do what? Make, Make you free. free. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. James chapter 1. I wrote down, I think I wrote down. No, it's 17. James chapter 1, I'm going to write chapter, I just wrote down the wrong verse. I know it is in my heart. I write too fast when I'm writing these messages. Because I write when God speaks to me. It's the same chapter. Just go down to verse 17. 17. Look what it says. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variables, neither shadow of turn. So every good and perfect gift come from who? Come from God. From God. Paul said, we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we shall take nothing away. Job said, naked I came. Amen. Amen. I got some Bible. Job said, when I came here, I was naked. And naked I shall return. And he said, and the Lord give it, and the Lord what? He going to give it to you when you get here, and when you get ready to leave, he going to take it back. Because you don't need it where you going. Amen. 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 The goodness of God. I like what Job said. I was naked when I got here. And look at all the clothes you got now. Amen. So many pair of shoes. I remember we used to go to Payless and try to get buy one, get one free. You own boy Payless clothes, but if they was up, you wouldn't go on nowhere. Amen. Cause God done what? Bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm getting real close to this last scripture. You don't have to turn to Proverbs 10:22. Proverbs 10 22 say the blessings of the Lord make it rich and with it he added no sorrow. When God give you something sadness is not connected to it. Amen. There's a lot of people they got wealth and riches and they suicidal. Mm -hmm. But we thought money bring happiness. In some cases it do. But the divorce rate in Hollywood it's just as bad as it is in the hood. Amen. Amen. Somebody made a song that said, love will keep us together, not the yacht, <laughs> not the mansion. Love will keep us together. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But if money was the binder between a man and a woman and his family, then why so many people get divorced in Hollywood? 
Because, I can tell you why, they don't follow the principle of marriage, which come down from what? God. He said, husband, love your wife. I didn't say, husband, love your wife, y'all got money in the bank. Amen. He said, wives, submit to your husband in all things, not if he got a job. Amen. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Amen. Not if they let you go on a field trip. Not if they let you go hiking. Not if they let you spend the night at your friend's house. Not if they let you and give you everything you want, buy you an ex buy. Say, children, obey your parents. See, we'll follow God then everything will be all right. Amen. The goodness of God should lead you to repent and change because we all know that God is a good God. Yes. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name.